Hi, welcome to General Chemistry. My name is Chuck White and I teach chemistry at the University of Utah. This is a series of 10-minute video lectures and the first one is on matter and measurement. In this lecture, we're going to talk about the scientific method, which is basically a system of testing hypotheses or ideas about how nature works. We'll talk about the classification of matter into elements, compounds, and mixtures. And we'll talk about physical properties and chemical properties and the difference between those two things. The scientific method consists of three parts, and the first one is observations. Scientists make careful observations about nature and make observations in the course of doing experiments to test ideas about nature. And so a simple observation would be the sky is blue. The second part of the scientific method is to provide explanations for the observations. And we do this initially in the form of hypotheses, uh, but generally if a hypothesis stands the test of time of many different um, tests or, or experiments, it evolves into a scientific theory. So an, an initial hypothesis for our observation that the sky is blue might be that air absorbs red light and allows the blue light to come through to our eyes, and that's what makes the sky look blue. We can design an experiment, which is the third part of the scientific method, to measure, for example, the absorption coefficient of nitrogen and oxygen, which are the major components of air, at 650 nanometers, which is in the red portion of the visible spectrum. And if we do that, then uh, we can show by experiment that air does not absorb red light to any appreciable extent. And so what that does is nullify the hypothesis. Any good hypothesis should be able to make predictions about behavior of systems that haven't yet been tested. And so experiments are usually designed to be able to falsify a hypothesis or a theory. It it's rarely possible for an experiment to completely prove that a hypothesis is correct, uh, but it's often possible to design an experiment to show that a hypothesis is incorrect. And so uh, in this case, we've shown that air doesn't absorb uh, red light, and so that can't be the explanation for why the sky is blue. So now we need a new hypothesis, and a new hypothesis might be that dust particles in the air scatter blue light more than they scatter red light, and that's why the, the blue light comes from the sky and into our eyes. We can test this hypothesis, and this particular hypothesis has been tested many times in many different ways, and when that happens, uh, a hypothesis gradually evolves into a theory. And in this case, uh, the theory would be the theory of Rayleigh scattering of photons by small small solid particles that are suspended in air or some other medium. Now, uh, we can classify matter, and matter is basically any substance that has mass. If you can see it or interact with it and it's not a photon, then it's probably matter. And almost everything that we interact with, except for light, uh, is uh, matter, including wood, sand, water, milk, anything. Now we can classify matter uh, into pure substances and mixtures, and a pure substance is a substance having specific fixed properties. The components of a pure substance cannot be separated without breaking chemical bonds. And so examples of pure substances are water, oxygen, sugar, carbon dioxide, gold, things like that. Now, sub pure substances can be further classified as elements, which are composed of only one type of atom, like iron or oxygen or ozone, uh, might be a molecule, but it still consists of only one type of atom, or into compounds, which are composed of two or more elements in definite proportion by mass. So, for example, water has twice as many hydrogen atoms as oxygen atoms, and or by mass has eight times as much oxygen as hydrogen in it. No matter how much water you have, it's always eight times as much oxygen as hydrogen by mass. Mixtures are any combination of substances that can be separated or purified by physical means, not by chemical means. And so examples are salt water, which could be purified by distillation, or wet sand that could be uh, purified by uh, uh, evaporation, or milk, air, concrete, anything that can be separated by uh, physical means. And uh, these mixtures can be further classified as homogeneous mixtures, which have uniform properties throughout the sample in a single phase, like salt that's thoroughly dissolved in water or air. 
uh, or heterogeneous mixtures where the properties vary throughout the sample, possibly in multiple phases. So our examples are uh, milk, wood, concrete, which all have a single phase, or fog, which is a su suspension of liquid droplets in it. Uh, gaseous air, or smoke, which is a suspension of solid particles in air. Now physical properties are used to observe and describe matter. Usually uh, we tabulate or, or measure uh, the physical properties of pure substances, but sometimes uh, tabulating properties of mixtures is also useful. Physical properties can be measured without changing the chemical composition of the substance. So for example, uh, melting point, boiling point, density, viscosity, these things are physical properties and we can usually look these up in tables for any particular substance. A chemical property is a property that determines the behavior of, sub of a substance with, res with respect to chemical reactions. And examples are the ionization potential, electronegativity, uh, the enthalpy of combustion, reduction potential, oxidation state. These are all properties that have to do with the chemical properties or reactive properties of substances. Uh, in the picture, we, ha we show candles burning. On the left-hand side, uh, the candle is in normal gravity. On the right-hand side, uh, that's a picture of a candle burning in micro microgravity on the Mir space station. Next time, we'll talk about conservation of energy and mass. We'll talk about the International System of Units, or SI System of Units. And we'll talk about precision and uncertainty, especially with respect to reporting of significant figures. We'll see you then.